Gotcha. Um, let's start with Ukraine. Okay. Uh, there are a whole plethora of reports out this morning that the administration is reconsidering providing um, lethal assistance to the Ukrainian government. Uh, would you care to address those? Well, Matt, we are constantly assessing our policies on Ukraine to ensure they are responsive, appropriated, and calibrated to achieve our objectives. Uh, we are particularly concerned about recent escalating separatist violence and separatist attempts to expand the territory they currently control further beyond the ceasefire line agreed to in Minsk, as well as the increasing toll of civilian and military casualties. Uh, naturally, we take into account events on the ground and events that are ongoing. Uh, so I'm not going to go into uh, details of internal policy discussions, but we do continue to assess how to best support Ukraine. Our focus does remain on pursuing a solution through diplomatic means, and we are always evaluating other options that will help create space for a negotiated solution to the crisis. Okay, so it sounds like you're not saying no, that these reports are wrong. Um, is, is it accurate then to say that this kind of assistance is now part of the conversation? Well, we haven't taken options on or off the table, Matt. It's an ongoing discussion. Obviously, we take into account events on the ground, but I don't have anything to lay out for you in terms of internal deliberations. Well, the president and his cabinet and the rest made the case that the sanctions that have been <clears throat> imposed by both you and Europe are having an effect are having a desired effect in putting pressure on the Russians because of the way, in the president's words, the Russian economy is tanking mm -hmm. or in tatters. Um, does this not suggest now that there is some kind of a fundamental rethink in, within the administration that perhaps the sanctions in and of themselves are not having uh, the desired effect because the, the the Russians have not changed. No, we have always seen the sanctions as one tool that we use. As you know, and this, the president also gave an interview that I believe aired yesterday where he talked about the fact that assistance to Ukraine, economic assistance, non-lethal assistance is obviously what we've given to date, uh, over 118 million in training and equipment to assist Ukrainian forces. Um, we've provided, we're, we're working on a, a, a several different levels. That's not just on sanctions and consequences. That's also about providing a range of assistance. And we've long been discussing uh, and continue have continued to increase the kinds of assistance we've provided. Right. But even as you've been discussing and increasing the kinds of assistance that you have already provided, mm -hmm. you are accusing the Russians not only of strengthening their grip on Crimea, which you think that they annexed illegally, but also um, of increasing the amount of territory they have under control, in, under their control, that the separatists have under their control in the east of Ukraine. So with those two things, Crimea still being annexed by Russia and the um, the rebels gaining ground rather than losing ground or going into negotiations I, I how is it that you can say that the policy to date has had that desired effect well Matt I, I think there's a couple different questions you're asking aside from reports today we have increased our assistance including a range of non-lethal assistance and a range of uh, equipment, body armor, helmets, vehicles over the course of the last several months. And that's to be expected. We continue to discuss that. We haven't taken op options off the table. So you're saying that maybe the results of the latest stuff that you've sent aren't, ha they're not in yet? That the, 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 the Matt, I'm saying out? that we continue to evaluate the right steps and the appropriate uh, approach here. Our focus remains on a political and diplomatic solution. Why, why would President want to get into a proxy war with Russia? Well, I don't think anybody wants to get into a proxy war with Russia, uh, and that is not the objective. Our objective here is to change the behavior of Russia. That's the reason that we've put the sanctions in place. We certainly want to help uh, Ukraine, a sovereign government, um, thrive and um, and um, go through this transition period. No decisions. Uh, have been made. I'm talking about the fact that we, of course, preserve the right to consider a range of options. Well, but the, I mean, if if the reports are correct that the administration is giving a new look at whether to provide lethal assistance to the Ukrainian government, 
And if, as you have said many times from the mm -hmm. podium, that the pro-Russian separatists are receiving uh, not merely lethal assistance, but are getting actual help from Russian forces in unmarked uniforms, um, to provide lethal assistance to one side when the other side is backed by uh, the Russian Federation would seem like you're inevitably getting into a proxy war. Well, the decision hasn't been made to do that, Arshad. Obviously, there are a range of factors I'm not going to outline through here that uh, senior officials in the administration consider with every component of aid we provide. But you would agree. You would agree with the basic thesis that if the Russians are arming one side and you're arming, and you were to choose to arm the other side, that you would have embarked on a proxy. I war. wouldn't agree with that. But we've long said that we believe a political solution and a diplomatic approach is the right approach here, which is what we continue to pursue. And do you think it's conceivable that changing the uh, balance of forces on the ground? Uh, might help achieve a political solution? Changing the balance of forces in what capacity? On, on the ground. It, by doing what? Well, by, by, you know, by doing what we've been talking about, providing lethal assistance, which might help change the balance that of forces That decision on the hasn't been made, so no, I'm no, not going but, to speculate on the, it further. The, 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 quest, the question, and I'm sorry, it's my last mm -hmm. one on this, but my question has to go, goes to whether it is conceivable to you that changing things on the ground might help yield a political solution, which, as you say, is your preference, or whether you're not so sure about that. Well, I certainly understand your question. We'll let analysts do the analysis, given we haven't made a decision to change the approach here. What Go ahead. Or what has been the administration's reluctance to give the Ukrainian military lethal aid? Well, we've spoken about this a number of times, so I'd certainly point you to the president's comments, the secretary's comments. Our objective and our goal here remains a peaceful transition, a reduction in violence. Obviously, the onus is on Russia and the Russian-backed separatists to take those steps. Uh, we've provided a range of assistance to date. Um, the reason we've done that is because we want to support the Ukrainians, but obviously we haven't made a decision to provide lethal aid. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Nicholas, and we'll yes. go to you next. Sorry, right. so it means that the U.S. is totally supporting Germany with uh, uh, Angela Merkel just said this morning, that, uh, I quote, Germany will not support Ukraine with guns and weapons and uh, stressing for the need of a well, diplomatic solution. Well, every country makes their own decisions. We've stated similar comments for months now, so I think our positions have been very consistent. Go ahead. Um, in, the, in the statement today, President Obama said the, the budget uh, will gives us resources to confront global challenges from ISIL to, to Russia aggression. What is the, the administration going to do with the resources, and how is it going to confront Russia exactly? How are these resources going to be Well, I don't believe the be president said confront Russia. Uh, uh, the president to confront global challenges from ISIL to Russia aggression. Russian aggression is different than Russia. Russia, we work together on with on a range of uh, challenges and a range of issue global issues around the world. That continues. Okay, Obviously, how, he's. How does, let me finish. Obviously, he's referring to Ukraine. There's funding in the budget proposed for Ukraine. We're going to do a budget briefing at about 1.30 today, so I will leave that to our experts to discuss in terms of the resources that we'll be providing or would, we're, would that, we're proposing. Would that include lethal assistance? Obviously, we haven't made the decision to do that. Would, would such a decision violate the Minsk agreement and lead to escalation of the conflict? Well, we haven't made the decision to do that, so I'm not going to speculate on that and no. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, Secretary Kerry goes to Kiev. Uh, would mm -hmm. this question of political assistance uh, be part of his discussions with Ukrainian counterparts? Well, as you all have seen, obviously, the Ukrainian government, who we have a range of conversations with, aside from the secretary's visits there, has asked for and proposed a range of their own requests. Uh, we continue to consider those. Nothing has changed about the range of assistance we're providing. As I mentioned, that's $118 million in training and equipment to assist Ukrainian forces. This equipment has included body armor, helmets, vehicles, advanced radios, night vision devices. We'll let them speak to what they will raise in their discussions. Sorry, you said in answer to the question before that one, you said, which was, would it, would, if the administration decided to give lethal equipment to the Ukrainians, would it violate the Minsk agreement? And your response was, I'm not going to speculate and no. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm not, what's I'm the not no going to speculate. Let's move okay, on to so another wait, Ukraine question. But if it happened, you would not, 
We would haven't you, made the decision. I to understand do legal that. Assistance. The, I would, don't believe there's anything in there that would suggest that would violate. Oh. So technically speaking, no. Okay, so the administration does not plan to violate, even though it's not a signatory. I don't believe we're not a signatory agreed. exactly. But, but in keeping with the spirit of the Minsk agreement, you would not, the administration wouldn't do anything that would We certainly the support keeping in the spirit of the Minsk agreements, absolutely. Do we have any more in Ukraine before we continue? Uh, go ahead. Uh, according to